Hello, everyone. It's great to be here back at Products, Product Con here in New York. Good morning to folks here. Uh, I hope you all had your coffee and are ready to go. And good afternoon, good evening to uh, folks who are watching it on Hopin across the world. Um, it's fascinating to see how much product school has grown. I still remember you know, my, my days as an instructor. Uh, and now when I look at uh, some of the amazing uh, work product school has done with you know, over one and a half million product managers in the community, really uh, getting uh, value, learning about the craft of product management uh, and growing in their careers, it's just fascinating to see. All right. Uh, so I'll start off with an introduction about myself, uh, and then uh, I'll talk more about uh, my experiences uh, at Atlassian uh, and why revenue expansion in product load growth companies is so important, especially during uh, these towns when, uh, when the uh, you know, overall tech industry is slowing down. You know, I started my journey uh, as a PM at PayPal, launching products from zero to one, and back in those days, um, I really was fascinated by how much uh, value we can provide to our customers and delight them. Um, and I really enjoyed the whole process of you know, understanding the customer problems, looking at uh, you know, competitive landscape, the analysis, um, and then coming up with the right solution and delighting our customers. And I, I have continued to you know, stay in that field uh, since then and continue to enjoy uh, and grow in my career. And, and throughout the, my career, I've worked at companies like uh, PayPal, where I led consumer product, to Microsoft, where I led growth uh, for Azure, and uh, recently uh, at Zillow, leading marketplaces. Currently, I'm head of product here at Atlassian, where I, I'm, I lead our monetization, growth, revenue expansion um, teams that are responsible for um, driving growth for all, all the Atlassian products. In today's talk, um, I'm going to cover three things, and uh, the first one is understanding revenue expansion and how these strategies can really fuel growth for product-led uh, growth companies. The second is how Atlassian does product-led growth uh, and revenue expansion. I'll share some of my own examples, uh, some of the experiments we have done, and, uh, and what the impact of that has been. And, and lastly, uh, share some tips on how today's product leaders can use some of these strategies to drive growth and revenue expansion for their companies. All right. So let's start with revenue expansion. How many of you have used or heard about Jira? <laughs> Almost all, everyone, so that's, that's awesome. Um, and you, know, you may have started using Jira, and then suddenly you may have stumbled upon another product, let's say Trello or Confluence. Um, you know, maybe some of your team members were using it, uh, and then you started using that. Um, and now you know, you're using multiple products um, and getting more value. Um, so, in, so that's essentially your, your classical way of land and expand um, strategy, uh, which has become quite popular with a lot of companies like Salesforce, Adobe, Microsoft, that has a lot of different products um, for um, customers. Revenue expansion is essentially the revenue you, that comes from existing customers by means of different strategies like upselling, cross-selling, um, et cetera, where the same customers or existing customers can start using more products to get more value. Uh, and, and that's what drives the, the revenue expansion. The, the chart you see here, um, you'll see that there are two lines, and this is the compound interest. Um, when you look at the effect of compounding uh, or exponential growth, revenue expansion comes to mind. Because once you, know, you have a customer that starts using more and more products you, um, and get more and more value, that itself drives your revenue. So you don't have to go after a lot of customers, but with one customer you can actually um, drive more value. Um, this is the land and expand uh, model, which uh, a lot of you may have heard, uh, pretty common in, in SaaS companies. Uh, it starts with acquiring a new customer. An, um, a new customer could be a B2B or B2C, uh, and then quickly deliver value, which is one of the core uh, principles of product-led growth. Once they see value, um, they're more likely to come back and, uh, and start using your products more and more, 
And then once they get more and more value, they're going to expand into more products or additions or add-ons. Um, so that's what drives your land and expand flywheel. It's really about customer retention and building long-term customer value. Um, so next, let's look at how revenue expansion can fuel product-led growth. Um, here in this chart, you can see uh, some of the fastest growing SaaS companies. Um, you have the Zooms of the world, the Shopify's, Atlassian. Um, and the best SaaS companies can turn a dollar of sales or marketing spend into um, recurring gross profit at an incredible rate. And that is why, and the reason they're able to do that is because the, the, uh, often these companies don't have a lot of investments going into sales and marketing. Uh, and it, more of the investments goes, goes into R&Ds, which actually drives the, the, the flywheel, and they're able to generate more cash flow and, and be profitable. Now, before I go into um, some examples of how Atlassian does uh, revenue expansion, um, I want to give a quick background on Atlassian. Uh, many of you know us from using our products like Jira, Confluence, um, Trello, Bitbucket. Um, we have over 16 different products that are geared towards um, teams to make them more productive um, and collaborative. Atlassian was founded in um, 2002 in Sydney. Uh, we have over 9,800 employees. Uh, our products are used in over 190 countries while worldwide. Um, we have 240K plus uh, customers, um, which could be you know, startups or enterprise companies. Uh, and we also have uh, over 5,350 marketplace apps. So that's a bit of a background about Atlassian. Why is revenue expansion so important? Um, especially in today's uh, times when companies are not uh, growing as fast, you know, they're not hiding as fast, um, and the ability to acquire customers, new customers, goes down, uh, especially for B2B SaaS companies. We're seeing that uh, in a lot of companies, when you have less folks who are using your products, you're not able to acquire new customers. And what becomes even more important during these times is the existing customers that you have, how do you actually um, generate more revenue uh, from the, that pool of customers? So the revenue expansion becomes even more important. Um, the three drivers of revenue expansion that really propels product-led growth, first one is um, no customer acquisition cost. Um, your customer acquisition cost is low or almost non-existing because your existing customers are just expanding into more products. So you don't have to go back uh, and you know, run paid media campaigns or ads to acquire these customers. Uh, and higher percentage of revenue, therefore, can be spent on improving the products, building more features uh, on research and development. Um, so the second driver is lower customer churn rate. Because your customers are getting increased value, they're using more products or more features, uh, they're less likely to churn. Um, and that also uh, is because they are also highly satisfied customers. Uh, as you may know, MRR churn inhibits growth in SaaS companies. So it's really, uh, and some, some churn is in a, inevitable, um, you, you will see. However, some of these strategies can really um, lower that customer churn rate to drive more retention and longer custom lifetime value. All right, so the next slide is, let's see. Looks like this clicker has having some issues. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, for some reason this clicker is not working. Maybe you get another one. All right. While that happens, um, oh. The, the reasons why you know, the revenue expansion is so critical is um, there are four sort of key things that are important here. First one, oh, looks like it's moving here, but it's not moving there. <laughs> All right. So the first one is, uh, first strategy is upsell. 
Um, this is about encouraging customers to uh, get more value of, uh, through your products by uh, giving them um, more features through addition upgrades. For example, a lot of times you see you have free products, then you have standard and, and then premium additions. And uh, upselling is essentially a way for you to you know, encourage customers to, uh, to get more value. And, and they become more sticky, uh, and then you can retain them long, for a longer period of time. More value leads to greater retention and, and then more revenue. Here is an example of, uh, on, of an upsell experiment we ran some time back. Um, here you can see our hypothesis was uh, explaining how each feature can benefit a customer's day-to-day -day life will increase purchase rates. Uh, and what you'll see here in, uh, in the screenshot is we have a model where um, each feature has a link that pops up and it shows the customer uh, the benefit of the specific feature. Um, and essentially, how it does it change their day-to-day -day life. And, and by showing this, we were able to drive a, a significant increase in purchase rates um, and, and get more customers from free to standard and standard to our premium editions. So that's one example of how upsell strategies can really uh, fuel growth. The second example is cross-sell. Uh, this is where an existing customer that's using a product, let's say product A, maybe Jira, um, buys a complementary product. It could be Confluence on Trello. Uh, or adds on, and as your customers are using more product, they're getting more value, and that drives more revenue. One example uh, of an experiment we launched some time back is we surfaced relevant product integrations um, to customers to help them get more value faster uh, and result in adoption of more products. In the screenshot, you can see we have Jira, and we, uh, we took a segment of customers um, developer audience who are more likely to use our other products, like Bitbucket, and surface that um, in the customer journey. It wasn't blocking what they were doing, but more like a, uh, a complementary uh, and a path we created for customers. And, and what we saw was this, this helped um, drive significant in uplift in new product uh, MAO, which is monthly active users for Bitbucket. So this is one uh, example of how we can surface uh, other complementary products um, or apps to drive cross-sell. The third strategy is user expands. Uh, so think of uh, you know, your team members. Let's say you're using um, a product, um, Confluence, and you really liked the product. Now you want more and more um, team members to use it. Um, so you might go uh, and click on an invite button and then you know, 10 other folks have, you know, are now starting to use your products uh, and collaborating. So it's more natural, immediate way to make teams more productive and then um, drive virality. One example uh, of an experiment we tried in, uh, for user expanse is uh, our hypothesis here was you know, if we allow users to invite collaborators uh, with in-context invites, uh, it will increase collaboration and drive more monthly active users. Uh, here in this example, you could see we introduced a, a contextual touch point in Confluence. Uh, whenever you, you know, at mention um, and start typing a name, if you see less than two folks, um, um, names of less than two folks showing up that are already using your product, we introduce uh, a tab at the bottom that says uh, invite this team member uh, or add this team member to Confluence. And once you invite, uh, the user gets an email, they click on a link, they actually come back um, uh, and start using Confluence. So that's one example of how we uh, use contextual um, user invite uh, features to drive virality for our products. And this, this experiment led to a double-digit um, percentage uplift in invites. The fourth strategy is uh, product integrations. Uh, you know, oftentimes um, you will you have these products that you're already using. For example, uh, Slacks of the world or Zooms of the world, and you know, by building these integrations with third party, we can not only enhance value for our customers but also um, essentially create a new channel for revenue. Um, you, some of you may have um, seen this, um, or if not, I would highly encourage. Um, we have plugins for Slack where you can actually create tickets, you can change statuses, you can invite folks 
um, and collaborate on Confluence without actually going to our product itself. Um, that way, you know, users don't have to leave Slack. They can still um, use the same product and still um, work on Atlassian products. Uh, and the key here is to build that integration uh, between the products so that your customers um, get more value. Um, this is an, a, an example where we essentially build product integrations uh, with apps like Slack. Um, and the hypothesis was by doing so, this will increase productivity and retention. We also uh, have an offer with Slack where we Atlassian customers get a, a discount for um, buying Slack. So we, we ran this experiment. Um, and what we saw was, um, and, and the important thing was also building the integration at the same time, because if, if you don't build that integration and you just have an offer, customers really can't use both the products effectively. Um, so once we built that, uh, we saw that um, millions of monthly notifications are now being driven um, through Slack. And that also contributes to a revenue share for Atlassian. So that's another um, strategy of how we do revenue expansion through integrations. Now, you know, you've, see, you've seen uh, a few different strategies around upsell, cross-sell, user invites, uh, partnership, integrations. Um, the, there are a few things that are really important when you think about these strategies in, in PLG companies. Um, and I want to talk about three key takeaways that you can take and um, start experimenting with this to, to drive revenue expansion. The first one is, you know, we at Atlassian, we invest in growth teams and growth strategies to drive revenue expansion. We have teams that, um, that drive upsell. We have teams that drive um, cross-sell, user invites uh, for different Atlassian products. And their focus is um, really driving that part of the funnel. And because we are able to do that, um, you know, you can see on the on the chart on the um, on the right side the percentage of um, sales and marketing um, that Atlassian has compared to some of other companies, the Slack of the world, the Zooms of the world is is quite low. Uh, which means that because we're spending less on this, we are able to invest a lot more in R and D to really drive the product-led growth flywheel. Um, we run uh, experiments throughout the year. Just last year, we ran over 100 experiments um, to drive revenue expansion. Uh, so that's where these, uh, a lot of these growth teams come into play. Uh, so the key takeaway being uh, really investing in revenue expansion experiments. The second uh, takeaway here is um, you know, have strong set of guiding principles when you think about executing these strategies. Oftentimes, you know, small innovation can drive the most meaningful impact for your customers. However, without a set of these principles, it, you really can't achieve success. Um, listen to your gut. Talk to customers. If you're able to do A-B tests, get data, that's awesome. Uh, but for uh, some of the strat uh, critical strategic decisions, definitely use data. Um, think about confidence building uh, experiments and ideas. Uh, over process and then shipping on outcomes uh, versus shipping on time. It's okay if you know if you have to push your uh, feature release um, or an experiment by a week or two, as long as you're really focused on understanding the customer needs and then tying that back to a, a, a testable hypothesis that you have confidence on. That can really deliver uh, an outcome for you. And the, the third takeaway here is know your metrics by heart. And you know, it doesn't matter if you're just an intern or you know, an APM or associate PM or a senior PM um, or you know, at a leadership level, a VP or a you know, chief product officer at a company. It's really important that you know your metrics uh, for your business by heart. Um, first one is around the comprehensive funnel view. Uh, having a better understanding of your product health the customer segments um, can really help you pr um, define the product roadmap and strategic priorities. If you know there is a problem at one step of the funnel, if you know that the kind of a customer, let's say, you know, business uh, customers um, who are you know, from a specific function, if you see a drop off there, now you can really think about does it make sense to uh, build something to improve the experience for that, uh, that segment of customers. Um, so really knowing your funnel uh, in and out is, um, is the first um, aspect of knowing your metrics by heart. The second one is focus on insights, not just data. 
small insights can lead to step changing uh, businesses and customer outcomes. Uh, I can't stress the importance of this enough, you know, having um, experienced this in the last 12 to 13 years. Um, in, oftentimes, we have, um, we have uh, analytics teams that have monthly uh, insights uh, meetings with our, our product teams, and we look at the insights that are coming out, and then we ideate on experiments or ideas that can really move the needle. So um, make it a part of your product uh, management craft that this every, you know, depending on how, um, how big your analytics team is, sometimes you're able to, you know, do it yourself, but sometimes you really need to have a, a strong team who can get you those insights. And then the third one is, um, uh, OKRs, um, which are your objectives and key results um, for essentially mapping your goals uh, for the quarter and for the year, and then having business reviews, which could be, let's say, monthly business reviews or quarterly business reviews for, for your product. Um, sometimes, you know, um, it, the, this may not be the process for the companies you work at, but you can actually create a process like that, and you can get the right stakeholders from marketing, from analytics, um, you know, kick it off, and then you can go through the uh, the metrics on a monthly basis. How you're doing, you know, if you need to make any trade-offs or adjustments as, as part of it. So really, um, you know, start thinking about how you can monitor uh, and measure the effectiveness of these strategies um, by heart. So those are the the three key take takeaways, and this is especially important when you think about revenue expansion in in product-led growth companies. With that, um, I want to thank all of you for coming here I know, uh, and listening to this talk. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, I have a Substack where I also share some of my uh, newsletters and, and, and strategies on product-led growth, um, as well as Medium. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>